JD here with the How Department of Transportation in the Office of CAD Mapping Services. And this video is going to go over our new Create Design Files application. This application was developed um, for the Connect Edition products, so like MikeStation Connect or OpenRose Design or Connect Edition. Um, so it's not to be used with the V8i editions. Um, so in order to get this uh, application, you just need to have our Connect standards installed. Uh, so I already have that loaded up here in Maxtration Connect. Um, and so when you have our con our standards set up um, under workflows, you should see that we have our, our Ohio DOT workflow and you want to select that. And then you should see a new design files button. So I'm going to click that. This will launch the, the new application. So the first thing you should notice here is that it's it's pretty different from the old one that we've been using for in V8i. Uh, when I rewrote this, I took the, the opportunity to try to add some features that the old one was missing. Um, so so to start this out, just like all of our applications that we've been writing um, in the top corner of the help, you should see a PDF doc. This link, this will open up the help doc for this application. This video will open up a YouTube to this video that you're watching. And then the about just opens up a little dialog, gives you like version and description of the product and whatnot. Um, so next here we have the parent folder. So this gets populated based off the work set root variable. Um, so it's important to know that when you launch MicroStation Connect that you are selecting you know, the right workspace and the correct work set because uh, this is how this section is getting set. Um, you can't change this. So if you need to create it for a file for a different work set, you just need to switch to that work set. Okay, so um, the next part section of this application is the main um, chunk of it. So this file list um, is listing all of our different standard naming conventions for our DGN files. Um, so for example, if you want to create a geometry file, we have um, a specific naming convention for it and a, spe and a specific location within the work set that that file should be created in, um, which is what this section is kind of listing out. So um, this this is to make sure, you can use this to make sure that you create files in the right location and that they're named correctly. Okay, so to help you kind of find files, um, there's filter sections here um, to help you kind of filter this file list. And then this default section is, is here so you can set default values um, for the rows inside of this file list. So the filters and defaults, um, these line up with the columns they affect. Um, so if you change the width of a column, you'll see the filters or the defaults, you know, kind of stay in line with that. Okay, um, so to use this, you're basically going to use this create um, column to check on that you want to create this file. Okay, and we'll go over why this stuff is red in a little bit. Um, but let me just start going through the filters here. So this first column is to help you filter. So you can do all on or off. So after you have everything like checked on, maybe you just want to see what you are actually going to create. Um, you can switch that filter to just show you those ones. Um, so that's a pretty simple filter. Next one is category. Um, so all of our standard file naming conventions, um, all of these file names are grouped into a category. So like if it's a if it's a roadway uh, file, you'll see it's in the roadway category, bridge inside the bridge category, drainage inside the drainage, and so on. Um, so if you know what category you're looking for, you can just come here and select that category. And this is multiple multi selectable. Um, so you can just select all the ones you want, and then you can hit the little class button or you can just click off of it. It's going to close that. It's going to populate the header with the ones you have selected, and it's going to perform that, that filter for you. Um, to remove it, you just uncheck all the ones that you had selected. That gets rid of that filter. So the next one is the, the type. So you either have a base map type or a sheet type, as of right now. Um, and so if you just want to see all the base map types, you can just select that, and it filters that all the sheets. All right, so next is the description of that file. So say you wanted to create like a geometry file, you can just 
you know, start typing in geometry, and you'll see it dynamically filters uh, the table as you type. Um, so that's how description works. It's it doesn't have to start with. It's just the contains. Um, so it doesn't have to. You don't have to. Like if you want to search, say, general notes, you don't type in general. You can just type in notes, and it'll show you all the results um, that have a description of notes. Um, the last filter that I have set up here is for the code. Um, so this goes to deal with our naming convention. Um, so rather than making our file names really long with the, like, a description of what the file is, we use a two-character code. Um, so the common ones you typically have memorized, but um, you can easily you know, filter off of the code if you know the code. You just type it in and it'll filter that result. So that's how the filters works. So next, if we move over to the defaults, so defaults will um, just help you set some defaults um, for the, the file list. So the first section here is the base folder filters. Um, so the way this is working is you have your parent folder, which gives you the path into your your work area, or I should I say work set. Sorry, project wise is coming out. Um, so it's giving you this location to the specific work set. So the base folder would be right inside of there. So this is kind of building the path to where the file is going to be. So for engineering files, you can have you know multiple engineering folders uh, based off maybe you have multiple consultants working on a project. Um, so this gets populated with all the different 400 series um, folders that it found inside your work area or work set. Sorry. So as I select one, you'll see that the lines below change, and only the ones that aren't checked on. So once you check on a file. The defaults aren't going to affect that row because I'm assuming that you probably already have it set the way that you wanted it and I don't want the defaults to override what's already checked on. Okay, so you notice that any of these files that deal with engineering, these lines got changed. And now the same goes true for the survey folders. So we have a 300 series survey and you can have multiple survey folders for different surveyors if you have in multiple on the job to store those files. So as I select these, the survey files will change. So the easiest way to show that is if I just filter the survey, and you'll see there's two survey types here. And as I switch that, you'll see the defaults are changing. Okay, let me remove that. So next would be the structure folders and the wall folder defaults. So structures and, and walls, they get a little more complicated in how you can organize the files. Um, that's why there's this default here. For all the other disciplines, so say like the roadway, you you don't get a choice to change that because it's always going to go inside a roadway folder. Same thing for like drainage or geotech. But for structures, um, for large projects, you might want to divide your projects or your files for each structure into a separate folder. And that's what this allows you to do. So the structure pull down gets populated with all um, the structure file number or the culvert file number. So this is you can create these folders and to help separate or organize your, your structure files. Um, so in order for this app to know where to create the file, you get to select what structure folder you're dealing with. So if I select this one, you'll notice that that the lines change, and you also notice that the last option is roadway. So if you elect to not um, separate your bridge files to separate bridge folders. Um, that's what the roadway section is for. So this is going to be like for minor bridge work. You don't have too many files. It doesn't really make sense to you know create a structure fo folder um, for that kind of small bridge work. Um, so when I select roadway, um, it will change the default folder to be the roadway base maps folder. Um, so that's why that's there. So bigger projects, you can you know, separate your files out by each individual folder. Smaller projects, you can just have it go to the roadway folder. Same goes for walls. So walls is also inside the structures folder, but you can create these wall folders and you can organize organize your files that way as well. And again, there's that roadway folder. Same same reasoning as as the bridges or the culverts. Um, so these only affect the lines that correspond with the category. So if I switch my category to wall, you will see as I switch, these switch. 
Okay, and you also notice that the file name switches. So when you're dealing with the structure folders, um, the file name is dependent upon the, the f actual structure name. So you'll see these update. I'll go over that a little bit more when we get down into this section. Um, so that's how that default is working. So next is the PID. So this gets populated with the ODOT PID variable um, that's in the configuration for the work set. Um, I make it a text box so that just for those one-off projects where you're combining PIDs together. And so you really don't need to come in here and change it too much. Uh, just put it in there for those couple projects where you run into that situation. The next default would be uh, the file suffix. Um, so when we go to create a file, you, know, you kind of can see it's going to go up following this path to get inside the work set. Then you're going to go inside your base folder. You can go inside your, your folder that the file will be created within. Then you have your file name and your file suffix. So the file suffix is to prevent uh, duplicate file names. So if I needed two um, files, digital train model files, you know, the first one could be 001, the second one could be 002. What this drop down does is allow you to organize your files into series. So maybe you have a certain location that you have a bunch of files that pertain to that location. Maybe you want that to all those files to end in the 100 series. So when I select like the 100 series, you'll see, and I check on something, you'll see it starts at 101 rather than 001. Um, so that's there. If you want to use it, you don't have to. Um, but this is another way to help you organize your files if you want to. And the last thing would be the, the default comments. So you'll see as I change it, it dynamically changes. All right. If I can spell it right. All right. So that's really the defaults. Um, just to help you set defaults before you start checking things on so you don't have to keep changing it down in this section. Okay. So coming down to finish off the comms I haven't talked about yet. Um, the first one here would be the number of files. So if I needed say three files for digital train model, I can just type in three and you'll see I get two more lines, right? And then you can individually set things for this line. And this is one of the enhancements that the old create design file application couldn't handle. And you notice the file suffix automatically populates um, with the next available. So if a file already had been created, you'll see that it'll skip that number since it knows that it can't use that number. And if I come in here and change things, as long as all the drop downs are the same, so like this is going to a different engineering folder. So if I change this suffix, you'll see I can have the same as this one because they're going to a different location. But these two go to the same location, these two lines. So if I change this to three, you'll see it instantly goes red. Um, so the application is not gonna let you create duplicate file names. Um, so it's automatically going to fix the file suffix for you. So the second I come off of it, it's going to put it back um, and it won't be read anymore. So it's kind of nice. You don't have to worry about that accidentally creating or ch typing in a number. You also get the ability to type in a number, whereas the old application you didn't have that, that option. So that's how that's working. Um, the scale gets populated with all of your available scales in your active design files. Um, it is defaulted, um, so the program defaults these to the appropriate one, but you know that you could need a different scale here, but it is defaulted. Um, and then the seed file is also defaulted by the application. Um, so if this file should be a 3D design, you'll see it defaults to 3D. If it should be a 2D design, you'll see it defaults to 2D design. If it should be a sheet 2D, it defaults to sheet 2D. Um, but if you need to switch the seed file around or you have you know multiple locations with different custom scale factors so you have different seed files for each of those locations you can get them all listed in here so as long as you are using our standard um, folder directory structure the the application should have no problem finding all your seed files um, do want to mention that um, some of the scales are locked. So like say for example these one this one is locked. That's basically telling you that this really should be at a one to one scale. Um so I'm not letting you change it. Okay, so another thing I didn't mention is why this stuff is red. So the application will look to see if the folder path exists. So what this is telling me is that something in this path doesn't exist. 
And I know it's the base mask because I personally deleted it to show you that it goes red. So if I went and I looked at this project, you'll see oh, I don't have a base mask folder. So the, you should never really run into this because when you create the file or the project, it should have our standard structure in there. So you shouldn't really ever not have a file or a folder. So, you know, I'd have to go in and add that base mask folder in. Um, but for now, I'll just switch it to the 400 because I know that one exists. Okay, um, so let me check on a couple more. So like I check on this one, you'll see it started at 02. That tells me that I already have an, a 001 for this file created, um, but I can you know make two if I wanted to. And now for the structures, since I, I could choose a default, I also can just individually change it down here. So I can change that per file. So if I know I needed, this bridge sheet for say I had two structures, I could easily just create two and say one for this structure and one for this structure, and I can create them very easily. Okay, um, so that's really the gist of the of the application. I'm going to hit create design files. Um, so you see it's just processed through seven files extremely fast, um, but you saw the progress bar. So if I want to see what it actually did, I can just hit that little arrow, um, and so it says processing this file. I created this file successfully. I updated the drawing scale on this file and I added title and comments properties to this file and then I move on to the next one. All right, and it gave you the total processing time at the bottom. Okay, you can hit that to collapse that. Um, so that's, you know, really fast creation of the files. You can now just go and open those files. They are existing. But one last thing I wanted to show before I end this video is that it does work with project-wise. So in order to save some time, I already have um, a MicroStation Connect open inside project-wise. You could tell there's the path inside project-wise. Um, and, and so I haven't updated the configuration yet. Um, so you can also load it through Keyin. So again, when we release our managed workspace for project-wise, that button will launch the same app. Um, but for now, I can just do the key in. And here is my application. So you can tell I'm inside Project Rise, the parent folder has that listed. So let's say, I, let me just create one real fast here. So I'll check this on and I'll hit create design files or create files button. Um, let me actually hit the checkbox. Apparently I missed it. Um, so I'll just create this. It's going to be a little bit slower inside project-wise just because it's in project-wise, but not too much. Um, so if I go jump over to project-wise, one thing I want to mention is that since it the access to project-wise is technically a different session, um, when I create a new file, um, you'll think, oh, it didn't create it. Um, you have to refresh. So I'll just hit F5. And I'll refresh this folder. And um, which one did I create? I create the yeah, geometry. I think I did. Um, let me switch. Show you that it actually did create it here. Um, so there, that's the one I believe I just created. BK, I think, because it should be BK03. Yeah, I guess I could just look at the results. So I put it there. Yeah, BK02. So you see that it did actually create that. All right, so if you guys have any other questions, let me know. Hopefully you guys uh, like the enhancements I made, and let me know if you have any problems with it.